Justice now on BBC Two and back for a new series, All Rise with Julian Clary. on All Rise tonight, this vicar charged with cruelty to bunnies, and these likely lads charged with unlawful conduct at work. Frightful punishments await those found guilty. So now please all rise for Judge Julian Clary. Sit yourselves down <clears throat> and welcome to All Rise, the show in which a handsome homosexual gets to grips with the trials and tribulations of bog standard people. <laughs> For the purposes of light entertainment. And um, sitting here, I can't wait to get my hands on it's uh, my favourite aunt who tonight will be playing her Elizabeth Taylor to my Larry Fortensky. It's Auntie June. <laughs> Dear. Yes, dear. I'm so glad you remembered to pick up your suit from the cleaners. Yes, I got those unsightly stains out. Good. Now, what about your briefs? Oh, they're still caked in it. <laughs> <laughs> your court briefs, dear. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm ready for those. Have oh, we got good. some exciting cases? Well, <laughs> yes, we have. The first case is the one about the rabbits and some vicar who wanders round his graveyard in the dead of night, confronting them with his horrible aerosol. His horrible what? His aerosol, dear. Oh. <laughs> his terrible vision, you know, no, some vicar true. with his trousers no, down dear, there. No, dear, no, dear. Not in front of auntie, sorry, no, I'm dear. Sorry, no, 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 no. Just uh, tell me the, the hard facts, please. Oh, don't ask me, dear. Just ask David Williams, from the Animal Health Trust. OK, then, I'll go over and speak to you. Yes. And uh, mm. I think you'd better take the witness with you. Oh. Oh, oh bless it. The little baby one. What's his name? Beautiful. Well, either Flopsy or Mopsy. I'm not sure. I fancy Roger. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's the hole for my pyjamas? That's what I want to know. <laughs> You don't listen, dear. There's a bit of Velcro under here. I know there is. Keep those big ears down. I think I found That's the zip. It. Oh. <laughs> Off you go, dear. Just a bit of mange. I'm going now. I'm Get going. to work. Hello there. Hello. And um, who, do, who are you? You're David... David Williams. David Williams. Indeed. Any relation to Tennessee? No, I don't think so. <laughs> And um, what do you do with yourself, David? Um, what do I do with myself? Well, um, I'm a veterinary surgeon. Get I off. work. <laughs> You're in the dock, you are. <laughs> you can answer yourself. You're a rabbit hater. Oh, no. Sorry, you, what do you do? I'm a veterinary surgeon. I work at the Animal Health Trust in Newmarket. Most of the time I do eye, eye disease in dogs and cats and horses, but as well I do uh, all sorts of exotic animals from... Mm. Uh, Elephants right down to little bunnies like, uh, like this little chap. What's the case you're bringing to court this evening? When I heard that this vicar was having problems with, with little bunnies, rabbits, in his church graveyard, eating flowers that people had put there, and that he was, uh, he was spraying these flowers with hairspray, I was, I was astounded. This was absolutely ghastly. You were gravely concerned. I was indeed. <laughs> in your kind of pretend eccentric way. Indeed. Yeah. Um, but you are. I don't, 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 don't touch me. In fact, 
It's your own fault. If I could get a word in in my own show, get off. Oh, indeed. <laughs> I think actually you'll have to ask... Church of England? Yes. I might have known it. over there. Anyway, David. Um, the thing that I'm saying is that this, this vicar may not willfully have tried to poison the poor rabbits in his graveyard, but he doesn't know what's in that hairspray, does he? And in fact, do you know what's in the hairspray? Auntie, have you got the can of hairspray? Yes, dear. It's not bad. And what's in it? Can you, can you read uh, on the can? Well, it's CFC-free and ozone-friendly. And a lot of very small print. And as with insurance documents, it's the small print you really have to be very careful about. And there may be things in the hairspray that could damage rabbits. A large number of things, that's right. OK, well, we've got a couple of carrots <laughs> here. <laughs> one's just an ordinary carrot and the other one's got hairspray on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we could try Roger out. He doesn't seem to mind it either one. Yeah, uh, I don't think that's... Uh... Oh, shut up. <laughs> now, now, tell me, now, tell me, the interesting thing is, you've, you've taken... You've had, a bite, you've had a bite of the one that w hadn't got hairspray on. What I'd like you to do is have a bite of the one that had got hairspray on and tell us if well, you can I'm see Well, I'm sure you'd like me to do all kinds of things, but I'm not going to do that. Now, hello, hello. Charles, can I ask you, um, how do you take it? <laughs> These charges. Are you guilty or not guilty? These charges, yeah. I am absolutely innocent. Totally not guilty. Well, you do go around spraying the flowers with hair spray. Oh, I do that. I don't deny that I spray the flowers, but there's but, nothing wrong with it at all. But you don't know that. You, there may be bunnies lying in their burrows, you know, with their entrails hanging out of their mouths. <laughs> Because of the hairspray that you've inadvertently introduced into the food chain, Charles. Look, I've looked down a few burrows in my time. Oh. <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> Let's have a look at a picture of your church here. Looks like some kind of warehouse. Warehouse? Do you have raves that in is there a on a Saturday? <laughs> that is a beautiful building, about 900 years old. Have you got a perm? <laughs> Um, what about the food chain? That's what worries me. You see, it gets into the rabbits and then a passing gentleman of the road may walk by and eat a rabbit and then it's into oh, the whole but he humanity. shouldn't be eating those wild infected. rabbits, should he? Auntie. He should be looking yes, after yes. them as I do. Um, do we have anyone from the meat trade? A charcutier. I beg your pardon? Your butcher. Then Anita Harris, maybe. <laughs> Peter Asia, dear. A professional butcher. Poisoning rabbits with hairspray ain't going to make them taste very nice, is it? <laughs> Look at him waving his chop around. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. And you're the warden? Yes, I am. Barry, hello. Hello. What does wardening involve? It involves various things, but especially protecting our priest's wife's flowers and, and other people's uh, flowers. I see. And uh, how did you find that they're repelled by hairspray? We put uh, hairspray on flowers to preserve them. And through, through doing this, we found that also the rabbits did not eat them. So uh, well, it works a double indemnity on does that Does it score. repel anything else? Like the unwanted advances of homosexuals? Because... <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I haven't tried. There, there are menace <laughs> around my way. <laughs> <laughs> they all come out at dusk, auntie, and <laughs> sniff around my cat flap. <laughs> uh, oh, auntie, what do you think? What about, dear? Rabbits. Oh, they're quite nice in a pie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. Well, last words from you, David. Well, Julian, you suggest... <laughs> um, it turns out that actually lion poo, uh, lion dung, is particularly repellent to rabbits. Well, I couldn't find any lion dung, but I did manage to find some elephant dung, and I'd like to... I'd like to present... Isn't that wonderful? I'd like to present that to the vicar um, to put on the flowers. In fact, uh, you'll find that it works tremendously oops. well as a... <laughs> tremendously well as well, manure as well. I get the well, so. idea, but it doesn't solve the problem. You can't buy that at 7-Eleven, can you? Indeed, yes. <laughs> now, vicar, you know you're the first vicar to be dragged up before me since gay pride. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think? Your final words in your own defence. Look at me. I am. <laughs> I must be innocent. No. no. Not guilty. No. I must be innocent.
I feel a verdict coming on. <laughs> Stand up, please. Um, well, I don't think this is the worst case of cruelty I've come across in all my days. I think the worst case was probably the police raid of uh, Underpants Night at the Three Cocky Sailors. <laughs> I could hardly walk home, could I? <laughs> Therefore, Charles, I find you not guilty. <laughs> you can shut up. Um, here you are, Auntie. Do you want this? Oh, yeah. yes, if you like, dear, if you take those. I'll give that to you. These mm, are I... for the vicar. What oh, are they? Oh, oh. They're Auntie's ginger biscuits, dear. The judge's favourite. <laughs> In your own kitchen. And uh, try not to go around strangling cats or anything, won't you? <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> When it comes to justice, I like to put it about a bit. <laughs> and this week, this week, in search of a better class of punter, I packed my Louis Vuitton and whisked myself off to a stately home in the Midlands to listen and to solve. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who you are? Lindsay. You're the whitest person I've ever seen. I know, I never, I never got a tan out of there. Oh, do you mind if I put my sunglasses no. on? No. It's, it's your choice of foundation is similarly <laughs> pasty, isn't it? Yeah. You don't think you're anemic? No, we, I'm always dead white. Now, what's your problem, dear? What can well, I do Well, it's you? Um, my boyfriend is dead possessive. I've only been going out with him two months, and he's really, really possessive and jolly. Is he a bit rough? Not really, no, but he does get mad. Only if like, someone looks at me or I look at someone else. Well, well, one just can't help looking at people. I know, you know, when we're in a club and someone nice walks past, what am I supposed to do, you know, just look at the floor? He keeps sort of going like that, is there something... It's he's got a stomachache or something? No, belly button fierce. No? Yeah. When did you do that? Yesterday. And how was it? It was all right, but I screamed because I looked down and saw the needle sticking out of me, and that's when I screamed because it was a really, really big needle. Does Kev know about this? No, not yet. Does that mean someone <laughs> touched you? Um, oh, God, I never thought of that, actually. Yes. <laughs> Do you think this relationship's going to last? No. <laughs> not I don't. much longer, no. No, a matter of moments. I know. <laughs> when are you seeing him next? I don't know. He's going to phone me up tonight. Oh, we'll chuck him. <laughs> yeah, and if he doesn't like it, you can come and sort it out with me. <laughs> Hello. 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 Why, what are you doing here today? We bought two coach, coaches full of uh, Henegate school children. So your your teachers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. For our and, mm -hmm. and the problem is related to? We have a an all male senior management team, yeah. don't we? Male yeah. chauvinist to the heart, to the core. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the head's office? Mm -hmm. Is it spacious? Absolutely. Absolutely. Carpeted? Yes, yeah. yes. Shag par carpet. Shag par. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And there's more women than men on this 65% yeah. females. Yeah. And they've had the cheek to close down the ladies' toilet on the first floor. Because I appreciate women have to go to the toilet at regular yeah. intervals. Absolutely. We, we need more toilets mm -hmm. as well, than anyone else. For all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Uh, some of you get cystitis. Men yeah. cause that. <laughs> all the evils in the world, yeah. generally speaking, can be put down to heterosexual right. men. Yeah. <laughs> that's the end of it. Do you think if I sent him a letter? Telling him this just won't do. I think that would be a brilliant yeah. idea. We'd really appreciate that. Yeah. It has come to my attention. The ladies' latrine. Yes. It's basic to say the least, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> basic. Bring your story. My dear friends, Jan and Patsy, <gasps> riddled with cystitis. <laughs> <laughs> On <my> antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this just won't do. <laughs> Yours unnaturally. Give him that. Right. And, oh, um, thank you. Keep me informed. We will do. Thanks very much. That's excellent. <laughs> thank you very much. You see, I've got a gift. 
I've got a gift. Oh, I know, dear. And that headmaster has promised to um, look into the matter at the next AGM. Oh, I'm so glad. My sympathies were with those ladies. And that girl at the beginning, what was her name? Lindsay. Lindsay. She has apparently dumped that boyfriend, Kevin, and taken up with someone called John. Although she can't remember his second name. <laughs> sort of ships that pass in the night. Mm. Mm. Well, it's young people for you. Yes. No. <laughs> You're not like that, though, dear. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> anyway, let's pop on. Oh, right. It's the case of Azif Roman, yeah. and he charges two of his employees, Dan Adams and Glenn Pells, with dereliction of duty. Oh, serious charge. Mm. I've never charged you with anything like that, Auntie. Oh, good. Now, do you know, every morning at the crack, she's at my bedroom door. <laughs> oh, absolutely. With his boiled eggs and soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> Just see the boot marks on my headboard. <laughs> now, <Nothing. laughs> off you go. Hello. Hello. And now you must be as if. Yeah. Uh, have you got a brother called What If? <laughs> <laughs> it's only my fun. And um, how old are you, As If? I'm 19. You're 19? That's correct. And uh, you're already the manager of a fast food outlet. Duty manager, yeah. Duty manager. Mm -hmm. Barely, barely old enough to eat solids, let alone sell them. <laughs> <laughs> What's the trouble? Um, it's these two here. Oh, yeah. They're extremely lazy and troublesome. No. Uh, they're terrible. They work for you? They do, unfortunately, yeah. Doing, um... They're delivery drivers oh. some of the time. OK. Yeah. But one specific time, I sent them on a delivery. They returned after an hour, after having something to eat at the chicken shop and no. leaving the customers waiting. What, with their pizzas uh -huh. getting congealed on the back of the moped? Exactly. <laughs> I see. So, you've, have you tried disciplining them yourself? Loads of times. What, what did you do? Um, we've given them numerous warnings. Warnings. Tell them off. Telling off. Everything. How do you tell Cut them their off? Hours. How do you tell them off, as if? I get uh, the big boss, Ben, to deal with them. Oh, you don't yeah. do it yourself? Uh, <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a little Roger Whittaker beard. <laughs> <here. laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I get the idea. They're gen generally slacking on yeah. duty, but. Um, <clears throat> What do, they, what do they get for what they give to you? How much do you pay them? Three fifty an hour. Three fifty an hour. Too much. Uh, you think that's too much? Definitely too much. Well, I have to say, I know, I know a number of 19-year-olds with far less substantial packets than that. Then they should be privileged. They should do their job well, then. They should. I'll have a word with them, yeah. as if. Now, hello. 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 You are Dan. Yeah. I'm, I'm Glenn. And Glenn. <laughs> the question is, you see, do you deliver? We do we deliver. Do, yeah. And we do, we do the answer seems to be, no, eventually, in your own time. <laughs> Now, we'll start with you, Glenn. Glenn right. Pells. Yeah, that's right. It sounds like a foothill in the Mendips to me. <laughs> how long have you been working in this fast food place? Um, I've worked there for about three months now. And Dan, how long have you worked there? Uh, about three months. Three okay. months of hell with that manager there. Is yeah. it hell? Yeah, hell, right. yeah, he's, uh, he's a terrible, he's a terrible manager. Rushing us all uh, the time. He, he's, say, he's saying that we're not delivering the pizzas. Now, we always deliver the pizzas Never before we have something to eat. When you're on the road, <laughs> you've got loads of deliveries to take. You're taking them non-stop all the time. You're going to get tired. You need something to drink. Otherwise, you get dehydration, you end up crashing. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you <laughs> don't get dizzy, do you? Why are you high on speed? No. <laughs> it's it's do, you not have, do you not have breaks scheduled where you can we have, can't a have a break. We can't have a break. No one lets have a break. When it's quiet, we never we get a break. break. It's going to be yeah, you be lying. Lying. Are they lying? Are they lying? You always bring my pizza away. I never deliver to you. Are you a dissatisfied customer? Yeah, it's only because if you used to give me a tip... If you used to give me a tip... Oh, fine. You have to talk one at a time, please, otherwise we can't cut you out. <laughs> Here you are, the pair of you, working in this pizza place. When you were an adolescent, Dan, a few years ago, when you were younger, did you lie awake at night dreaming about um, delivering a hot, spicy one? Oh, yes. <laughs> because I know I did, but strangely, Never with a cheesy topping. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Now, we look at the maps to get things clear. It's been all this North London shouting. Um, <laughs> now, this is the base of operations where That's you work, yeah. where you're the proud manager, as if. Yep. OK, and let's say this is the punter, 
This is your little nook here where you live. <laughs> and that's the, the route that they take. That's it. However, according to you, as if, they may stop off here at the chicken bar. Yep, that's where they eat. And they get a little drink here. Light refreshment. I see. Well, that's been gripping. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and this is the, the machine, the mean the machine, machine yeah. that you do your deliveries on. Yeah, not very really fast machine. Mr. Could we Wyatt. see you mount it? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, is it at all embarrassing going round on this? Very, very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Do you mind if I go round the back? No, you can go. <laughs> Uh, what, what goes on in here? Uh, what goes on the hot pizzas that we that's, deliver? Yeah, we deliver very fast, may I say. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, let's open this. See what lies within. And there is the pizza. You see, this is how it happens. And there it is. Oh. oh. A couple of rabbit droppings on there. <laughs> to have a look at the bike in action, to give it a bit of movement. Yeah. <laughs> How exciting. Well, surely, if you're doing that, Dan, wheelies, then the, the pizza's going to get with all that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cleaners, dear. Oh dear. Would you like some? Um, well, not really, because I don't know what's in it. <laughs> it's one of the perks of working for the BBC. Yes. Thank you. Okay, go back over to your place now. Who have you bought? <laughs> what are you booing him for? Because he threw pizza on me. <laughs> I rather enjoyed it. <laughs> now, who have you bought with you on your defence, uh, Dan? My Dave. Dave and ah. Dad, yeah. That man there, is that your father? Hi, oh, Chief. Yeah. Hello, Ronald. How do, sir? Hello. All right? How do. Yeah, good. You've just been picking at his shoulder. Only a lump of pizza. Oh, so nasty. <laughs> now, uh, tell me, what do you think about these um, accusations levelled at your young son? Well, the only speed he's on, he's delivering pizzas on his motorbike. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and you are? Dave. Dave, what's your connection to anything? I've known Glenn since he was eight years old. Oh, so you're and familiar. And he is a good lad. He is. I'm nearly in tears thinking about what they're saying about him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you may be overstating your case a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, to tell the, the final words, um, uh, what would you the like to say? Words? Just say your case again, please. They're guilty. They're, They're guilty. 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 I'm guilty. guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Rust, we're rusty. That's defamation of character. Defamation? It's all lies. Why, why are you not guilty? Because we're guilty. Because we do our job properly. We do our job properly. We never have complaints from customers. We've got to eat. We've got to drink. We've got to live. You know what I mean? You're going to do the same thing. You'll still be working. True. Yes, why are they still working there for that bad? Because. Because. We've been given numerous chances because we're cursed. At the present okay. moment, we're a bit desperate. Oh, definitely. Yeah, 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 thank you. Auntie, yeah, what, would you, what would you do with them? Poke them, dear. <laughs> <laughs> with your pointing <laughs> stick. <Yeah>. One. <laughs> I'd like to loosen my clothing. <laughs> I feel a verdict coming on. Sorry, but I find that stand up. <laughs> I find you guilty. <laughs> Poor old as if. So nicely turned out as well. Um, you've had an awful lot to put up with, and you've been extremely, extremely tolerant, hasn't it? As if, oh uh, yes. Yes, as for these two, I suspect cheese sniffing round the back of Edmonton slipper baths. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, um, as if, what are we going to give him? We're giving him Auntie's pickled walnuts. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Take that home with you Thank to you. ease the pain of it all. And as for you two, I think the only way we can save these two youths and their high spirits is, um, <laughs> I found them guilty, I'm sorry. <laughs> A spell of community service. It's for their own good. Three. Would you like to, between you, pick, a, pick an envelope, um, please? Uh, yeah, yellow. 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 yellow? Yeah. Try not to sulk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what it's it is. Ah. Bad. Oh. <laughs> well, they have been very naughty, haven't they? They certainly have, dear. 
If I had my way, I'd like to give them a good slap round the back of the legs. <laughs> Go on in, my dear. <laughs> let's, uh, let's wait till we're off camera. <laughs> This is a perfect opportunity for you to, to uh, put other people's pleasures before your own. How are you both at le leading community sing songs? Oh, I'm brilliant. Uh, I'm a singer myself. And like mopping that. up after incontinent octogenarians. <laughs> <laughs> because we're sending you both off to the Windmill Lodge Old People's Home in Brixton <laughs> to provide an afternoon's entertainment for some of the senior citizens there. Oh. Something a bit light. I don't know about you, Auntie, but I feel the urge uh, for a round of our competition to find Britain's prettiest policeman, or as it's known in student circles, pick a pig. <laughs> the winner will, of course, go home with one of these lovely t shirts. No. <laughs> I do have a couple of sherries. I'd had four. <laughs> four bottles, I think. And the eventual winner um, will be the proud owner of this shining trophy. <laughs> You've sent in your nominations and Auntie is clutching them. Could we have the nominations this week? We certainly could. The first one is Tim Grinstead from London, nominated by his friend. Tim is 27 years old and uh, is a police constable. He plays squash volleyball and enjoys working out. Something, something died there, dear. <laughs> Couple of hamsters. Well, the second one is John Kelly from Cambridgeshire, nominated by his friend Steve Davidson. Say no more. <laughs> well, he looks like a lovely boy. He's 29 years old, currently working in CID. And finally, Bob Nichols from Cardiff, nominated by his colleague, Howell Phillips. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, Bob is 31 and he's a sergeant. His nickname is Mr Blobby, apparently, and uh, can be a bit of a bandit on the golf course, whatever that means. <laughs> now, um, earlier on, our studio audience cast their votes, did you oh, not? Sorry, yeah. And uh, you've got the winner. Right down there, let's have a look. The runner-up with 97 votes was Tim Grinstead, but this week's winner with 114 was the lovely Don Kelly. Yay! He looks like he stars. <laughs> John will be along here in the studio for our grand finale at the end of the series. Oh, good. Meanwhile, that's enough camp old nonsense from us. <laughs> I have to go and lay in a darkened room with a damp flannel over my face till this time <laughs> next week. What are you doing? Well, after I've wet your flannel, <laughs> I shall be doing topic. some more jam making tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think I shall probably be straining my plums till all hours. <laughs> that makes two of us. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much and good night. <laughs>